Hi guys, it's Chris, and today we're going to be checking out the Mini MiG. What is a Mini MiG? Stay tuned and find out. So the Mini MiG is a FPGA chipset with a real 68000. This is a project from 2006 from Dennis Van Weeren. This is a revision 1.1. It has two megs of RAM, which can be split between chip and fast. It can run ADFs. It can mount hard drive images. It uses a VGA or RGB connector. Gives you 3.5 millimeter sound out. PS2 input for keyboard and mouse. It has a micro SD card for file access other cores, and also two DB9 ports for Amiga joysticks. For my own, I'm using a Sega, Ma Sega? Sega Master System controller. I've already gone ahead and 3D printed a case for this in the Tyance yellow printer filament. It turned out pretty good. Um, it's a very tight fit. This snaps into the 3.5 millimeter. It'll just snap together and you're rocking. Hey, take your card out so you don't chop it in half. On this card that comes with it, it has the core for this and some other different cores. You can think of this like the grandfather of the current Mr. Project on the DE10 Nano, but this is an all-in-one device. How beneficial is it when we have so many other ways to emulate an Amiga? Well, a lot of people are into timing and game accuracy. With the FPGA chipset and a real Motorola 68000 processor clocked at 50 megahertz, your compatibility is going to be on par. So let's hook it up and check it out. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave the lid off of it. So it's clearly marked who is what. So we're going to hook up a PS2 keyboard, a PS2 mouse. It comes with an included mini little plug 5 volt power supply which we're just going to run off my solar. You know, green earth and all. I'm going to go ahead and advance, plug in the VGA connector. You can also hook this up to a 15 kilohertz monitor. There's a jumper on board for 15 or 31 kilohertz. There's also a jumper for MCU or FPGA chipset. And here's the 68,000 right here in the front of the board. We're going to take the the 3.5 millimeter from the Dell 2410 and plug it directly into the device. We're also going to plug in my controller in advance. Now we're going to plug in the power which will bring the unit to life immediately. You'll have one power and on here is access for the power and the drive itself. You're going to see the Mini MiG Core load and I should get a workbench ROM. Now this is controlled by myself and what do I have on the on the card? How do you access anything? By pressing F12, you're going to get a menu that says four DF slots, so DF0 through DF3. If you press the right arrow, you can go into alternate core, and let's say I wanted to play Pac-Man. Now, for some reason, Pac-Man is sideways. This Dell will turn the turn itself on the side. So I could play Pac-Man. I'm in the wrong port. It is hard to play sideways. Great. By default, it's going to load 512 Kickstart, which is what I told it to. It has 2 megs of RAM on chip, no slow, 4x floppy speed, and 4 floppy drives. By pressing F12, once the core loads, I will go to the right, I will go to settings. I can tell it chipset. My speeds, normal, turbo, PAL or NTSC, ECS, OCS 500, you're going to notice it looks weird, 1000 or ECS. I can mess with my memory up to 2 megs. Now here's a bug I found. This unit has 2 megs of RAM, but I can also crank 1.5 megs of slow RAM. Now the funny thing is, is if I change my kickstart right to whatever I want, 314 even. I can go kick 314, reload, watch this. I'll have the Hyperion ball in a second. Oh wait a minute, I messed up my RAM. With two megs of chip I'll have the, the 314 core. Now for some reason when you press F12 
I'm going to go back to Workbench Kickstart 3.1. As long as you're within 2 megs, you're fine. If you mess with the memory, even though it shows you that you have the ability to do 3.5 megs, that's not correct. So you can only do 2 megs. Now I can split it, half a mega chip, 1.5 1, 1 megs of fast. I can load a hard drive, floppy drive speed. You can turn on filters, scan lines, high res filter, and your chip set. I'll just leave it on 2 megs of chip. If I go to the right again, I will have my number of drives, the speed, and I can turn the 600 IDE off or on. If I press this on, I can select which hard file, exit again, and I scroll all the way to the bottom and hit save, but I'm not on this. I'm just going to say reset. So resetting the Minimig with the master enabled. This will then, you can see the hard drive loading here on the green. It will load a workbench. There we go. The IDE is enabled. Slave hard drive is not present. Loading DH0. So after several long minutes, you can see that it loads into a workbench, which I have no memory left. So, F12. I'm going to go into settings, drives. I'm going to turn the IDE hard drive off. Save. And we're going to go into firm, whoop, settings, memory. We're going to turn this to kickstart 1.3. So loading Kickstart 1.3 will give us the friendly hand holding the disc as you can see. Now that's pretty neat in itself. I'm going to press F12 and I'm going to hit DF0. I'm going to go into games and I'm going to pick a game out of these WHD load mess. You know what I'm going to play. I'm going to put the second disc in. Okay, I got three discs of cannon fodder in. We all know this game. I play it with everything. Fairy light where dreams come true. That's great. Don't need a controller on this one. I'm using the PS2 keyboard and mouse. Loading the game. Off ADF. 2 megs of chip. Kickstart 1.3. In PAL with the correct resolution. Click. This is not WHD load, it's ADF, so keep that in mind too. Insert this too, it's already in there. Loading. Not bad at all. We could hit save and type Joel's and get the four star general. Like they always do. So how's gameplay? This is the fastest level in the world. So let's see. How's the sound? How is it any lag? Nope. Perfect. Saint Dragon. Doug likes this game. So here's Saint Dragon, Workbench 1.3. This is the game that Doug plays a lot. I don't know if I'm in the correct port, but we're going to find out. Yes, I am. Seems to be okay. When I fire, it's a pretty fun game. Oh man, I crashed into the ground. But as you can see, it plays totally fine. Now you can also press a button right here. And that brings up the same as F12. There's another button over here that will reset the whole unit. Back to what you have set and saved. Now, since I saved Kickstart 3.1, that's what's gonna load. I'm going to say settings, drives, hard files one. 
Now I can choose another hard drive if I made one. Now it does have some ADFs that are put on here for tests. So what we can do is this. We can say DF0. We're going to go into testing. We're going to load the famous SysInfo. This is the new one. So this is SysInfo on the Mini MiniMig. I'm going to zoom on in here. You know it gets blurry. So it's an ECS Agnes 2 MiG and PAL, ECS Denise 68000. We're going to hit the speed. This is a real 68000, so the speed will be accurate. 40 megahertz. We can click expand, give it a tug, make you feel better. We're 3.4 times faster than an Amiga 600, uh, two and a half times faster than a 2000 or 1.47. We're going to round it up to 1.5 times faster than the Amiga 1200. There you go for gaming compatibility. 1.87 MIPS, 3.08 times chip speed over an A600. Now we're just going to go into drives again. Here's our DH0. We're just going to hit speed and see what it's like. It's using the OFS. Woohoo. Now the 296K per second is total crap. So as you can see, the hard drive sucks and it's nothing to shake a stick at. It has 80 buffers, which is way too much for what this is. Yaqua. 4 gigs HDF file. What does that tell me? I can use other HDF files. Cool, huh? So we're going to go back into settings. We're going to take these drives out. and I'm going to turn the IDE off for now. And I'm going to save that kickstart. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now remember, it's CCS, not AGA. <laughs> Okay, that was pretty easy. I thought this was the machine gun one. Oh, look at the little cheesy cinema. Oh, yeah. Wee! This will be extremely hard if I didn't have trainers on. Cool. Little cinema cutscenes are pretty neat. I'm having a little bit of gameplay on 880k of of uh, RAM. That's you. I don't know that, but anyway, that works. So, gameplay is pretty good. Workbench kind of sucks, okay? It's not good at all. Making a Workbench 1.3 hard drive might be beneficial for some small programs, but you're not going to have any memory to do nothing hard drive wise. But it's kind of neat to see, you know, whoops, what it does. It's got a Mega Test Kit on there, the whole nine. This is the brand new one, 1.18. Tells you all about your junk. Kickstart 1.3, today's date, July 20th, 2021. It is not. Um, memory, 1.5 megs of chip. It doesn't have. I guess because it loads the kickstart. I don't know. Not even worried about uh, that keyboard, of course. It's going to pick up the PS2 keyboard. Floppy drives, of course. Uh, controller ports. Bip, 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 bip. Up, down, button two and button one. Uh, Chipset, of course. Let's check the CIAs that don't exist. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Peripheral ports. It has none. RTC. No clock detected. Serial parallel. We don't have a dongle. Audio. Has the new built-in mod file. And for filter, the LP filter turns the power light uh, off and on for filter. So if you're interested in that, that's cool. Space It Up by Jester Sanity, Pro Tracker by Frankie Willie. That's a lot better having that in the new Amiga Test Kit versus just that annoying audio, which is totally fine. 
Keir Frazier is like a rock star when it comes to stuff. Grease, weasels, this program, you name it. Wonderful job. Switch to 60 hertz on the fly. This monitor will do both. It takes a second to do its little... There we go. Now this is not how my Amiga test kit looks in 60 hertz, but it doesn't matter. It runs in PAL. Everything's groovy. F12, kick the disc out, reset. But as you can see, it does function totally fine. I could pretty much play whatever I want. I don't know. What's a good game to play? This is like the Super Mario Brothers to the Amiga. I needed four more coins. There we go. Okay. Press your button in the air, you can fly. Anyway, is it? Whoa. So anyway, that's me playing Super Frog for a long, too much, too long of a time on the Mini Big on ADF. Is it fun? It's actually very fun. Does it load okay? It loads fine. What am I doing? Reset with another disc in the drive. It's pretty simple to use if you're into like uh, into simple ADF games. You wanted something that's relatively inexpensive. What did this cost? How much is this unit? Um, I paid 120 Canadian dollars for this. Your prices may vary depending on your currency and depending on what they're selling for. Chip shortages, availability, other fun facts. But, is it pretty cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it for something simple. Quick Amiga fix, portable. Now, is it Pimiga? No. Is it a mister? Not at all. But it's the grandpa. Maybe even the great grandpa to the mister. So if you can keep it into those perspectives, price point, availability, ease of use, it's pretty simple. PS2 mouse and keyboard, availability for DB9 controllers. I'm using a Sega Master System joystick. Anything you toss right on here, it's a FAT32 card. Boop! All the cores, everything is available from the website, which I will link in the description below. So this has been a super fast review on the Mini Mig. Here's what she looks like all close up. So here's your reset, the F12 program button, menu, your micro SD. The only thing I hate about this is it doesn't, even though it clicks, you can just slide it out. It doesn't grip very well. Very inexpensive part use. So make sure you're snugged in there. Uh, PIL, here is your Xilinx Spartan. The 68000 is right here. Here's the memory. There's no way on earth this is only 2 megs of RAM. It's got to be more. It says expansion header here or spare I.O. Don't know what that means. 31 or 15 kilohertz. FPGA or MCU. And a Xilinx program JTAG port. Cool. Joystick. Mouse. RGB. VGA. PS2 keyboard and mouse. And power. Pretty cool. That's all I got for a quick review of the Mini MiniMig. You can get yours in the description below. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps you. And as always, I hope you learned something.